Greetings, ladies and managers, and welcome to the latest edition of Tales from Outer Space, where I take stories from across the internet and read them for your entertainment. This particular story is called Humans Don't Like Bullies, and if you don't like bullies, why don't you click that like button, leave a comment down below saying no bullies, and if you haven't already, please subscribe, so that we can head to 100,000 subscribers just a little bit quicker. Thank you. Anyways, on to the story. This story is written by John Galt. Trittle stood quietly, shoulder to shoulder with the other nibbits. The only sound was the slow breathing and the occasional gasp. The docks had never been so quiet. All eyes were turned upward at the local station's news screen, watching a fleet of dozens of ships rip past their little trading station. Trittle's hand moved on its own to the pendant around his neck. It felt heavier than usual. He wanted to close his eyes and pray, to cling to what hope there was, but he didn't. He kept his eyes stuck on the screen, like everyone else. The news broadcast was muted, but subtitles ran along the bottom. Destination confirmed. Rokine Fleet is headed to Nibbit Prime. Trudel's shoulders fell. The silence was broken by gasps and cries of no. His hand moved up to his mouth, smoothing out his twirled white moustache to try and still the shake in his fingers. It was work to do, so much that needed doing. He needed to pack to send out messages, organize his finances, and a lot of ships would be undocking soon. There was a rumble that rose above the crowd. It pulled Trudel out of his introspection, and he turned to see a new light single-seat freighter descending down on steel tethers to one of the docking pads. He was the only one looking. Others were still stuck on the all the stuff that I need to do phase, yet to snap out of their own introspection. Trittle eased through the crowd and pulled down his pad master cap tight. He was still on the clock. He wasn't one to shirk his duty when the world broke down around him. He jogged on his stumpy legs and pulled up his tablet, checking the ship's swirling non nibbit letters against the image on the file. A human trading vessel, single occupant, sucrose, requesting refuel and general maintenance. The human climbed out of the cockpit and stretched up. Gods, he was tall, three nibbits in height. His facial hair was as short as the juvenile's. Little stubby pricks of hair were all over the top of his lip and jaw, but wrinkled flesh down one side over the human's face told of age or mutation. Tittle jogged and waved his tablet to steal the human's attention. No, 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 you can't park here. Tibbet Station is closed for business. The human stood half out of the cockpit. He glanced back at the seat while rubbing his neck and shaking each of his legs out. His attention flicked from the triddle back to the seat before shrugging and dropping down to the steel floor. It said open ten minutes ago when I asked for docking permission, he said. His universal standard was passable, but carried a thick upspin accent. Triddle had a nose for traders, and he could already tell this one was going to be a problem. A long-haul trader well beyond the reach of his home star. Such people were running from something, and that meant trouble. That was ten minutes and a war free to go. We need the pad for evacuation. The human stepped to the pit axis and started hauling out a fuel line in one hand and a coolant pipes in the other. He was bloody strong too, hauling four nibbits worth of work on his own. W war fleet, he said. No, we are evacuating. We are no longer interested in buying cargo. Forget about the cargo. Go back to the war fleet, the human said. Trittle tamped the button on his tablet for security, then lifted his eyes to the human, watching him leave the coolant line in and start cycling the heat up from his ship. The human's eyes flicked to him as he went, expecting an answer. The, the Roke appeared to be breaking the truce. They are heading to my homeworld, he said. His voice broke as he reached up to the pendant around his neck. To my, to my dear Replish Fluk. You need to warn them, he said, stating the obvious. Trittle watched the expecting security response time tick down and shook his head. They have outfitted themselves for surprise. They rocketed past at threat six. There will be no warning. The human made a high-pitched noise with his lips while plugging the fuel line in and nodded his head gloomily. That's fast. You don't have anything faster. Again, it was obvious. But this time, the human did not expect an answer. He knew it already. It was the sort of thing you said when there was nothing else. <sighs> If it will burn, said Trouble. The human stood silent, running his hand over his worn, pockmarked steel of his ship. There was little burns of metal from light laser fire. The hull panels had different levels of wear and age. The human pressed his forehead against the metal in what looked similar to a prayer. It felt almost intimate and started to make Turtle feel like he was watching something he shouldn't. 
The human suddenly slapped the metal and stepped back, casting his eyes around the docking pads, flicking from one ship to the next, until they settled on a capital cargo freighter on the pads far below. How many live on Nibbit? he said. Does it matter? said Triddle. The human shrugged. No? Okay. What's that? he said, nodding down to the capital freighter. Triddle walked to the edge of the pad, keeping his distance from the human and peering down for a closer look. Bloosh, every freighter. Star six tether, thread trip drive, the human nodded to himself. Those could do it. Triddle narrowed his eyes. Even with dry weight, 50,000 tons, thread five at best. No, okay, okay. The human stepped towards Triddle and crouched down, putting a hand on Triddle's back, giving him the feeling that he was about to be pushed to his doom. The human put his head close to Triddle's and reached out, his hand hovering over the four engines of the freighter. Then he turned, directing Triddle's attention up to the rear of his ship. We bolted on. That should be fast enough. We need every engine for the evacuation, said Triddle. The human didn't speak. His hand eased down and his eyes fixed on his ship. Triddle shook his head and shrugged out the human's arm. We're not selling. I'm not buying. Give me the engines. Triddle wrinkled his nose and glanced down at his tablet. The human followed his gaze and saw the security counter, but didn't say anything. Triddle brought up the ship's weight, his thumb tapping against 88 tons. Let me get a calculator, said the human. Shut up, just... Triddle closed his eyes, running over the weight, the feedback, thread count, tolerances, rebuttal force. 9.05. The human clapped his hands and stepped back, arms splayed and smiled on his lips. Let's do it, he said in that thick accent. The human had a knife on one hip, a pistol on the other, and the scars of a pirate. He had never seen a less trustworthy individual, and there was no way that they could just give him an engine to ride off into the sunset with, hoping that he would make good on a deal to save people he didn't even know. Triddle rubbed the pendant, the tablet slack against his side, his eyes falling closed, the sound of boots tapped up the metal towards him. The security had arrived. The station is closed for... Mm, okay, said Triddle. He glared up at the human. Okay, we do it. Tuffet, can you and your heavy security personnel contact the pilot of the Blush Heavy Freighter? Under the Articles of War, we need to requisition one of his engines. Triddle jogged past the security and took in the deep breath. He pinched his nose shut and blew hard, roaring out through his sinuses in a loud squeak. He called to attention, dragged the dockers away from the broadcast. I need cutters and tapers. Priority one. We have work to do. The nibbits turned, faces glum, nodding solemnly. They thought the evacuation was still on. Rush up. We're getting the message through. We're going to warn home. Faces lit up and crew chiefs started to jog his way, each blowing their own distinctive tones to call their crews into line. The cargo bay turned into a chaotic frenzy of cutting, grinding, heaving, and welding. Triddle stood back from the modified ship, raising to his toes to eye the engine bolted to its trailer. Center of mass is still too low, he called out. The human eased down to the side of the comically large engine, a welding mask over his face. He wore no harness, which was a breach of dock safety that bristled his whiskers. But when he jumped off halfway up and thudded to steel without so much as a flinch of pain, Trill understood why he didn't wear one. Bloody monkey races. He added the human's ancestral line to another in the forest of the red flags. The human took up position beside Trittle and nodded to himself, he said something short and sharp in his home tongue, probably the human equivalent of Beck. We will need to strap some weight on top, said Triddle. The human wrinkled his nose at that and scraped his palm across his childlike stubble. A spark of inspiration flitted across his face, then sorrow. He said the explicitive again. Cut off the her landing gear. That'll bring it back up. Her, huh? said Triddle. Then he shook his head, superstitious to boot. Never mind, that should do it. Also, the sucrose is strained. Good. Fill the cargo unit with fuel. We don't have time to rig into the main feed lines. The human started laughing. <laughs> it already is. You stole sucrose in your fuel tank. People usually don't taste the difference until I'm long gone. Tuttle looked up at the human, holding his gaze until the human's amusement faded. Now are you enjoying this? A bit, yeah. Why are you doing this? Said Tuttle. The human laughed and smiled. <laughs> It'll be fun. Not every day you get to go this fast. The laugh was fast. He had seen the human laugh enough to know the difference. Trudel wasn't buying it. Why? The human's mask of a smile faded, his flame-scarred face sobering, and a memory of sorrow flicking across his eyes. 
I... I don't like buddies. How do you know that we are not the buddies? He patted Trudel's shoulder, his hand swallowing Trudel's side in the process. I know. He flicked his head towards the engine. What's a burn rate? 8.16 grams per second. The human was old again. I got to run some numbers, teach her how to maintain the flow rate, he said. Trudel blew his sinuses. Cut off the landing gear. He jogged along behind the human, following him up and climbing to the side of his ship to sit in the edge of the cockpit, eyes following the human's fingers as he started entering figures into that same swirling text. He ran a finger over the Star 6 engine controls on the tablet duct taped to the console and brought up a book with scrolling words. Trudel watched him type a few letters and glance back and forth between his words in the universal standard text. Oh gods, it was a translation book. You can't read universal standard. You usually don't have to, he said. You are enjoying this. Fake it. What's this? He said, pointing at the Star 6 control schema's emergency coolant override. Something very important that you shouldn't need to cross-reference with the translation book. The human threw up his hands and looked at Trittle, but not at Trittle's expression. His eyes ran over his size, then the amount of space in the cockpit, then back to Trittle. No, said Trittle. You can sit on my lap. I will not. You don't want to be the one to warn your people. Trittle almost lost balance as the ship was heaved up on some docking cables, suspended a few feet off the ground as metal clanged down to the deck. The ship teetered and groaned with the weight of loss of the landing gear. Something caught Trittle's eye, a small toy bound to the air vent with cable ties. It was a stuffed pink mammal. Its fur burned. This is a bomb. You understand that, right? We're flying a bomb. The human's face displayed relief, and he settled in, drawing a harness over himself. Trittle glared at him, unsure about the smug expression, until he ran over his words, remembering his use of weir. He stood on the edge, ready to jump down to the safety of the station. What about your dear Ripplish Fluk? For a moment, all his doubts flitted away. He was standing in a field of grain, feeling the warm breeze run through his moustache, seeing them running up towards him. He shook off the memory. You don't even know what that is, he growled. He pulled off his cap, tossing it down to the cargo bay floor, then settled on the human's lap with a scowl. The human pulled straps over him, binding the two of them together against the seat. Trittle wrenched the tablet off the duct tape moorings, and the ship eased away from the dock, hovering high above the void below. I'm Simon. Trittle. He focused down on the control, cycling up the engine, testing the cool. The ship's power core eased up, rising higher and higher, from a whine to a roar, pushing itself well past the red line. The whole ship began to shake, making the letters turn blurry despite having a personal padding between him and the hull. A coolant pump started to scream. Hazard warnings appeared over the human's controls and were promptly dismissed with speedy fingers. Trudel's eyes flicked up, following the human's hands until they saw something terrible. The license slot on the dash had a card in to broadcast the owner's identity. It had a little picture of a human face on the card. It was a standard thing that all ships had for docking, but attached to the license in a little metal chain with three more tags, each with his face and a different fake name. Simon was a pirate. Thankfully, it wasn't too late. The docking clamps still held them. The cables had not let go and wouldn't until Trittle told them to. He could put a stop to it now, reclaim the engine, resume the evacuation. Trittle looked at the scorched stop there, a child's toy bearing scars that no children's toy should. He didn't like buddies. Trittle couldn't be sure what would happen if he trusted the human. He pulled up the radio on his vest. Release! he said. Trittle's stomach lunged into his throat. The station and the other ships rushed by as they free fell, hurled towards the docking bay floors by Coriolis. The doors wrenched open and slammed a moment later, accelerating them harder with a burst of wasted gas. Tease it up a little, said Trittle. How much G-force can you handle? said Simon. Twelve, said Trittle. The human let out a single laugh, ha, then threw down the accelerator to maximum. Trittle was blasted into the human's chest, a tail of roaming flame, bright as a star, long as an ocean roared out behind the little bomb, honing them around sideways and catapulting them through the threads of space. Trittle could only scream. Bound to the human like a stuffed toy, was bound to the air vent. The tablet pressed flat against his chest as they rapidly reached critical speed and tore through the fabric into super space. End of story.
I would just quickly like to thank the T5 peeps. Dragon Soup, Cold War Boomer Waffen, Severin Cerberus, Red Panda 121, Leslie 517, Bushmaster 177, Casper Arnold, Cam Maxwell, Sans the Skeleton, Lightjock, Dragzoon WRE, and Lord Azrakal. Thank you very much.